Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Matt and today I thought I'd try something a little bit new, something that I've been thinking about for a while. Uh, since I am a fan of Formula One, I wanted to do kind of like a combination of both a brief race review, but mainly discussing the strategy of uh, the drivers in Formula One during the previous races and being able to point out some very unusual strategies, some that have worked out great and others that have not worked out. This is primarily in regards to both the tire wear or at least the tire choices as well as you know the pit strategies you know when should someone pit versus when somebody shouldn't and again what has worked and what hasn't worked for those new to the channel hello and welcome would love to uh, have you guys like comment and subscribe of course please comment down below about any strategies that you have maybe seen within the this last race or two uh, something that I may have missed or your personal thoughts or opinions on my thoughts and opinions so of course the video for today is the first race in the formula one 2022 season and that occurred on march 19th and that occurred on march 20th 2022 and that was the Bahrain uh, GP. At lap one of the race, Sonoda had a brilliant start. He had gone up four places, like within one lap. And he actually went on to have a really good race where he was just slowly making up time and slowly closing the gaps there. And I honestly think it was due to the Red Bull power plant, where the Red Bull power plant is very quick. However, on the flip side of things, Bottas actually had a very woeful start, <clears throat> as usual. Um, <laughs> but what was interesting to see is how he recovers in the future. And we'll kind of discuss that when we get to the uh, strategy side of th uh, things. Um, again, lap one, uh, Akon actually spins out uh, Schumacher. Akon gets a, a five second penalty for causing collision. And then this is where a little bit of strategy comes in. Strategy. Strategy. There we go. Verstappen had attempted to pit early on lap 15. And I imagine that Ferrari were going to pit a little bit later. But Leclerc actually had a reactionary pit stop. So he saw, you know, they saw that Verstappen pit and they immediately went in, which denied the undercut. So after uh, Leclerc had denied uh, the undercut by Verstappen, there was an amazing fight. This was, this is what we needed for the beginning of the season is insanely close racing. I've never actually seen Formula One cars get so close. Leclerc was just right up against the bu back bumper of Verstappen. It was just amazing that they were just going back and forth, back and forth. And it wasn't like they would take a full lap to you know take an overtake. It would be like multiple in the same lap. And it was just absolutely spectacular entertainment. It was just amazing to watch, but uh, all good things must come to an end after a great amazing fight for three laps or four laps uh, turn one of lap 19 Verstappen again goes for the same move third time he's done this he's up on the inside and he locks up Leclerc sees it happening and he is able to you know kind of go on the inside of Verstappen and Verstappen loses you know, some significant time and Leclerc is able to make a pretty sizable gap so after doing a pit stop to mediums, much like Leclerc did very soon thereafter around, you know, the 30s for the laps, um, Verstappen pits again in about 43 or thereabouts or 44, and Gasly uh, retires from the race at lap 45 due to uh, an engine fire. So at this point, you would think that Verstappen should have an advantage because he pit right before the safety car period. He's got brand new tires, but as the safety car went out, uh, Leclerc can notice that he had a 30 second gap to Verstappen because he had pit. So Leclerc pit, Versaffs, and now he denied Verstappen the advantage due to having a <laughs> soft tire setter two laps newer. So again, the race restarts on lap 51. Leclerc just takes off. He's gone. And um, Verstappen, during this time frame, 
starts discussing over the radio how he's got steering issues. There are a couple of murmurs, a couple laps before then, but he's got some steering issues for whatever reason. So then shortly thereafter, around 54 or whatnot, Verstappen starts talking about a battery issue. He's having an argument with his engineer over the radio and is just starting to lose performance, like, dramatically. And Sainz, who's just been, you know, hanging out behind Verstappen, you know, I don't know, five, ten seconds behind, starts seeing these issues and capitalizes on it. So Sainz takes over Max's second place. So again, moves up to second. Verstappen goes down to third. And then just everyone passes Verstappen. He's just, uh, the car is just like not running anymore. And he just kind of coasts off to the pits and he's done. While all of this is happening, Hamilton, over the po course of the past 10 laps, has started to make some slow gains on Perez, who is sitting very nicely in fourth, Hamilton in fifth. And then everybody is upgraded to place due to Max retiring, so Perez is now in the last podium place in third position. And then uh, kind of a sweet fight happens between Hamilton and Perez. And on the last lap, on the first corner, Perez... Hits the apex weird. I, I want to say he hits the curb or something. The car locks up. He spins. Hamilton takes it over. Grabs the last podium place in third position. And from there, that's kind of the race. You know, it was Leclerc in first. Um, Signs in second. Hamilton in third. And you could not have asked for a more dramatic ending to a phenomenal race. So again, kind of like I was briefly stating before, Leclerc first, Sainz second, Hamilton third, uh, Russell fourth, Kevin Magnussen, amazing race, finishes fifth, again, in a Haas, <laughs> and then Bottas sixth, and then Akan seventh, and then here's a big one, Yuki Tsunoda eighth. We'll talk about his strategy in a moment as well. So Alonso, who qualified eighth, had an interesting race as well, had a lot of weird strategies, uh, finished ninth. And then last but not least, out of the point finishes, we have uh, Guanu Zhou, who had finished 10th on his debut. Again, wild stuff here, again from Alfa Romeo. And unfortunately, uh, Mick Schumacher uh, finished just outside the points. Uh, only nine seconds down from Guanu's show. So finally, tire strategies, the main title of the video here. What went on strategically in the Bahrain 2022 Grand Prix? I always love downloading these photos and using them as reference, you know, as I'm uh, watching the race here. Um, that Pirelli says, hey, here are the, the tire strategies that we've come up with. Here's what we think is going to happen. So they're thinking that anywhere between lap 12 and lap 21, you know, everybody's starting on uh, softs. So around that time frame, we're going to have changes to either medium or hards. And they're thinking about two thirds of the of the drivers will be switching to hards. And honestly, only about six of them did. So, ugh. but then finally, uh, around lap 36 to 45. Um, people are switching back to either softs or going back to uh, mediums here to finish off the race. Now, the interesting thing that I do want to point out here is that during the race, we had very few people changing the hearts, and we can kind of go over that in a moment. So, uh, generally speaking, Pirelli had stated, or that there was estimations around testing, that, you know, of course, the tire compounds that were chosen for the race was the C1s, which were the hards, you know, C2s were the mediums, and C3s were the softs. Now, the gap difference in performance between the hard and the medium was anywhere between eight tenths to a full second, while from C2s to C3s, you know, going from mediums to softs, uh, softs were approximately 0.7 seconds or about seven tenths. Uh, faster on average than the mediums. Now, this was, again, estimation that were done during testing. So this wasn't like the official, this is what happened during the race. So overall, if we look at the chart itself, we have pretty much every team using mediums at some point in time. And the obvious one is everyone used softs. You know, McLaren did kind of an odd strategy where they wanted to see if they could uh, potentially 
uh, overcut some of the opponents by doing mediums and lasting longer than them. And then when everybody's pitting, McLaren has got you know some open air. They can make their lap times better. They've got a good graining effect. They're able to keep the performance up. But that really just wasn't the case. Furthermore, that was kind of the strategy for the hard tires too. But what's interesting is that on average, it looked like that the softs lifespan were about 15 laps and mediums were rather odd as well because they were up to about 20 laps in most cases but the hards were definitely the odd ones out here where the hards you know in most previous races if we were looking back in 2021 you can almost say that they'd go as much as 40 laps in some cases and they just were not viable in this race you know people did not use the hard tires more than 20 laps so they were getting the same lifespan as the mediums but keeping in mind that the difference between performance of the hard and the medium is eight tenths to one full second if as you can tell everybody who was on hards very shortly thereafter said why aren't we on mediums or softs we're losing a huge amount of performance because if you were doing if you had gone to mediums instead of hards you would have the same lifespan and eight tenths to a second faster performance so it's like a no-brainer why would you go to hards but unfortunately a couple of teams had to try it out just to see if it worked and they were not rewarded at all so one last uh, interesting thing that i did want to point out here too going off of the basic um lifespans of tires and whatnot aston martin was really odd because they were seemingly going as far as getting 20 laps out of their softs definitely going over that, that overcut strategy trying to see if they can maintain their tires uh through um you know the graining effect where they're getting the tire rubber off of the track back onto the tires and then it rewarming up um but it was weird is that hulkenberg did not see that great performance difference he was not able to make up many places he was not able to really go that far um lance stroll as you can tell here seven place increase so hulkenberg and stroll having nearly identical strategies uh because you can tell that you know um around lap 15 to 20 uh, they're both changed out to softs st after starting on softs and then around you know 30 to 40 they went to mediums and then after safety car went out then they went back in for the soft so again basically identically uh, strategically identical um, but Stroll just really had pace over Hulkenberg which is really interesting to see so then I actually wanted to pull up this chart here um, I want to kind of make my own version of this but for the time being I'll be using this one by racefans.net it is an amazing chart that you can that's interactive that shows you all the different drivers you know uh, all the different laps to which that they had these these giant uh, position decreases and then uh, increases once again uh, fully interactive you can change out drivers you can remove you know those people there you get a little bit more of a uh, open graph to see exactly what's going on you can choose certain drivers you can add them back um, so if you're kind of interested to see how uh, the place increases or decreases really occur during the race after the fact definitely go to racefans.net where they have an interactive uh, lap chart map for every race i think it goes back quite a while too you can go back you know a decade or two and they'll have the same stuff uh, set up for you i do want to point out that these giant spikes here uh, going up in position are traditionally for pit stops yes there are some instances where you have like a dnf or you'll get these random lines that just stop also due to dnf so everybody just naturally increases but the main things that we're worried about is these quick swaps so for example like um let's point one out here let's go to about um so here's one so you've got uh lap nine press is in fifth hamilton is in fourth and then press actually goes up into fourth and hamilton goes down to fifth and hamilton here uh pits actually on lap 11 into 12 here so you've got this huge decrease from fifth to 12th as everybody closely behind them in the race had just moved forward so something about here that little area is more privy towards either um pace loss 
and in this case, because it was right before a pit stop, it is almost very apparent that that is the uh, performance degradation or the tire degradation. Is that the after a long enough time, you know, the tires are losing their performance. Uh, the graining really isn't giving much performance back, and the tires are just fading. They're just dying, losing grip, losing speed. Uh, has to be more careful around the corners as you can't go as fast through them as you once were. So this area, you know, Perez makes that position up. Hamilton loses it due to the tire degradation. And very shortly thereafter, does this right call, the smart car call, and said, hey, I'm losing performance. I need to get out of here. I got to get better tires on. Um, unfortunately, it turned out to be hard tires. So not too much of a gain here. I mean, he comes back up into fifth as everybody else does their pit stops and he just kind of sits there this honestly right here is really interesting to see that after the pit stops there's very mo little movement at least from i don't know 14 15th on off everybody is just racing there's no passing it's just they're just kind of chilling they're just putting in the laps putting in the times uh, just kind of hanging out but um Going back to Lando Norris for a second, I don't know even how I got off this topic. Um, horrible start, goes down to 18th on soft tires, and as everybody starts to pit, he very quickly you know, makes the positions back up to where he qualified in 13th, but then he himself, um, we start noticing something very interesting happening here. So again, McLaren both started on medium, so they're thinking that they can overcut everybody where they can um, really sit out there and last a lot longer than everybody else. But as everybody comes out, everybody's going on fresher medium tires, if not hards. I think there's only a couple of teams that actually go softs. Again, that was mainly Aston Martin. And it looks like that even Ricardo did. Very interesting. Oh, and Latifi. Can't forget that. Um, but this is the interest. This is the stuff that I am very interested to, to watch here is that you've got this, this, these little steps and it's not due to pit stops anymore. I mean, yes, Lance Stroll did have a pit stop here. So honestly, Lando should have made another position up to 12th. But I mean, it's just slowly, you know, one lap down, you know, a couple laps in 15th and another lap down to 16th and a couple laps and down to 17th. And around here is when he does make that trade two uh does trade it out to hard tires so then from here he's just in last he's in last and he's able to make the positions up because other people are pitting and then he gets as high as 15th but then he's got a pit and then he goes back down to and then he goes back down to softs just right before uh the safety car period and that was i think kind of good timing on his part because as other people in front of him are having to go to the pit stop during the safety car period, he's just making up time. So he actually goes as high as uh, 16th and during this safety car period or right thereafter. Um, I think it looks like that uh, Ricardo had actually passed him right before the safety car period. So then uh, safety car is released, everybody's driving, and honestly for the, uh, the lower part of the grid, it's very uneventful. Everybody's just putting in their laps. Uh, we're stopping DNFs, so everybody gains that place increase. Um, and then Perez DNFs as well on the first corner of the last lap, so everybody else gets a place increase as well. So it's like, as you can tell here, this right here proves that the overcut with the medium tires for McLaren just didn't work. And I think with the hard tires, they were expecting to go keep on going, like going up higher and up to about here probably you know 11th maybe and getting that overcut in and then probably around here if there wasn't a uh, safety car they probably would have traded the softs last couple of positions and maybe gone up a couple more so so honestly at that point um if the hard tires weren't so garbage in comparison to the mediums um maybe they traded out for mediums they could have gone up to about here and then gone back down for softs and come back up maybe as high as 10th i don't know um but that's only for alternative universes to experience <laughs> continuing on the trend of hard tire users will uh, kind of point out uh mr 
Fernando Alonso, if I can find him. There he is in this list. So, as everybody else, apart from McLaren, started on softs. Um, and it looks like here, there's just not really too many people pitting around this area. And he's just... You can already tell that the tires were starting to wear out. And, you know, around lap 11 and lap 12, I said, hey, let's try hard tires. Huge huge issue here because everybody is bunched up it's still very early and he takes that that call of let's pit early uh, kind of around the same time that Hamilton does and he goes all the way down to the 20th but he actually did an undercut here because absolutely everybody else pit at the same time Fernando Alonso is now sitting on hearts he's back up into ninth four laps later but Again, kind of pointing out the issue with the hard tires. If he was on mediums, or honestly, I think what the, the plan was is that with hards that, you know, other people would be pitting early. So, you know, they'd be going down and they'd slowly keep creeping up. Um, I think they had noticed that with the medium tires being a full second faster than hards, I think at this point in time was just they were probably looking at the gaps to you know Pierre Gasly and Kevin Magnussen said, "Hey, I'm going as fast as I can on the hard tires. Um, the wear is about the same as you know what maybe Icon was experiencing at the same time with the uh, the medium tires potentially, and just like we're just we're just not getting there. So made the right call, uh, had pit early. You know it looked like the the pit window." was going to be anywhere between 36 and 45. So pitting around 25, 26 was very early. So honestly, only got like 12 laps, 14 laps out of the hard tires. Um, horrible call on going to hards. Like no increases. Performance was garbage. Uh, lost of quite a few places and then kind of crept back up on mediums. Did pretty well and then had to pit again around the pit stop, uh, pit the safety car window. Um, finally went on softs and uh, as everybody else was pitting after him I was able to make those places up and then with all the retirements somehow found his way back up into ninth another interesting strategy that I had found here was Kevin Magnuson um, you guys are like why is this interesting well the main thing was that on start gained two positions then slowly went back to where he was before and due to uh, pit stop of Hamilton gained the position then he uh, went back to the pits he went uh, his call this race was softs starting softs on the first pit stop medium at about 35 36 and during the pit stop window or the safety car period probably around 47 looks like went back to soft so soft soft medium soft so his gig, starting on softs, uh, was able to get a couple of positions, then decreased back to seventh, got one back due to Hamilton pitting, and then he pit for another set of softs. And again, um, I think it was the right call, honestly. But again, due to the fact that everybody had pretty uh, similar pace, and it was just pretty uneventful for this, this what, 10, 11 lap period, um, I think it looked like he made some made up some pretty good ground on you know Hamilton and Russell who were both on hearts and as they were starting to do their pits you know got up to six it looked like that um, lost one as uh, Hamilton came back and uh, oh and Russell had actually pit there too got it um, and then went back for the mediums came back up uh, shortly thereafter uh, safety car window went back for the softs and got uh, two place increases due to the Red Bulls uh, did not finishing or DNFing so looks great for Magnuson honestly uh, pretty solid strategy for that race realistically I mean there's I don't think anybody would run on full softs I think there's there's a rule where you have to have two different compounds or whatnot. Um, but as far as that went uh, for being starting in seventh and ending in fifth great couldn't ask for anything more so uh, a couple of more uh, quick strategies here uh, yuki Tsunoda here starting out in 16th boots all the way up to 12th by you know lap two now oh, excuse me lap one just four people in the first lap i mean it's 
love to see it. Um, then he slowly makes his way up as people are uh, just struggling. Apparently, Al- Alban just uh, had a really tough first race here. Lost a lot of random positions there. Um, and the Yuki kind of going up to ninth and then coming up to seventh as everybody starts doing their pit stops. But he joins the rest of everybody and goes all the way down to 14th. Uh, as people are still pitting, he switches the mediums, makes a couple more increases as everybody, you know, excuse me, as Alonso does his pits. And then Yuki does another uh, pit and it goes down to 14th by lap 30. And now he's on softs. So this is an interesting point because this is before the estimated pit window. So again, the pit window being, uh, you know, 36 to 45 that was estimated by uh, Pirelli uh, prior to the race. So everybody around this time is starting to make their early pits and then realizes, you know, a couple laps later that they could have waited for the safety car period. So uh, Yuki's got some pretty good tires on. He's running softs. Uh, mix up some positions that people are pitting early and then the safety car period happens and it's like hey might as well grab a new pair of softs while everybody else is uh, goes down a little bit um, nope wrong person there we go oh goes down to 12th for that second pit window and as the uh, Red Bull DNFs are happening um, he's making that those increases and this one here is interesting because uh, Schumacher does kind of a weird pit after the fact loses some places and then comes back at the end last but not least uh, I do want to bring up Bottas here um, again horrible start like you went from 6 to 14 you lost 8 places in a lap like did you just not turn on your car when you started the lap I don't know but um, this is uh, more or less a, a note showing how fast the Ferrari power plants are right now. Um, just starts making up places. It's it's lap 12 and he's already up three places. So then he goes into pits. Uh, bah, bah, bah. Lap 15 goes down to 17th. More people are pitting. So he comes back up going from softs to mediums and then... Uh, around 37 later he goes back to another pair of mediums but during this time frame this is just wicked to see um so he capitalizes a little bit on some people pitting here goes up a place while stroll pits again very uneventful middle area for uh the midfield to the top um so it's just hanging around alonzo pits and then sonata pits and then He's just still making those places up. Still going, still going. This this spot right here, as there's some pitting, but not not everybody, he's able to make some great, great moves here. And then finally around uh, 36, 37, pits down for another pair of mediums. Was able to get a couple places back as a couple more people are pitting. And then finally up in here, as there's a huge wave of people pitting for the safety car, he just sits for a little bit. And then he does pit finally. Uh, it looks like around 47. So around 47, 48, he pits here for another pair of softs after a good portion of people have done their pits and then gets promoted due to uh, the Red Bull DNF. So this this is what I like about um, Botas. It's just even if he has a sucky start, without anybody realizing it he's just making moves in the middle just nobody's expecting it so that being said um that is my race review and the uh, strategy review for the formula one bahrain 2022 grand prix of course comment down below uh any thoughts comments concerns favorite strategies least favorite strategies uh, favorite moments from the race, the least favorite moments of the race, uh, any predictions that you have in the future races on where teams may place, where teams may not place, any predictions on potential improvement on tires. I'd love to hear all of it. I, I know that you guys have a lot of opinions out there. I would love to hear every one of them because this is a really unique sport where we've got, uh, for the first time, a very close field where some people... Uh, wouldn't have had that chance 
you know, even last year where everybody is so compact, everybody's so close in performance. We have amazing close racing already. And I am just excited to see what 2022 holds for the Formula One season. Again, thank you so much. Of course, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Would love to see all you guys uh, hang out in the next couple of videos here. A uh, lot more videos coming on up. We'll be doing uh, Saudi Arabia Grand Prix uh, race review and tire strategy review next week after the race. So stay tuned for that. Otherwise, I've got some more reviews and gameplays that come out every Friday. So, of course, stay tuned for all that as well. So, again, thanks so much for watching. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Take care. Bye.